This hour sponsored by Ruptly, the video news agency. This is NAB Show Live. Good afternoon and welcome to NAB Show Live, brought to you by Broadcast Beat. I'm Linda Rossner and I'm very excited to have these three panelists here. We're going to be talking about IP SMPTE 2210. What is it and what is the main purpose of the new standard? And with us, um, we have right next to me, John Humphrey, who is VP of Business Development for Hitachi. And we have the Director of Operations of Plura Europe, I'm sorry, backwards, the President and CEO of Plura, Ray Callow, and to the right, far right, is Thomas Rock, Director of Operations for Plura Europe. So um, first of all, just tell us about IP 2210. What is it? Well, first of all, it's 2110, Linda. But that's okay. It says 2210 right there. Uh, that must be a new standard that I don't know. <laughs> no problem. 2110. 2110. I stand is. corrected. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, the computer industries and the television industries are merging. And uh, frankly, the computer guys are going to win. <laughs> they spend a thousand times more per year than we do. Wow. And so... Internet protocol is coming to moving video and media over networks. Ray? Which is true. Um, it, it's always going to be the, the, I wouldn't call it the struggle, but the convergence between the two technologies. You have IT um, technologies that it's been dominant for many years in the past in, in other applications, but also there are the legacy of broadcasters. Eventually they have to come together because that's where the future is and we are all here to make this happen. I think also for the new IP solutions there's much more, you can share your equipment to different points much easier on a IP infrastructure than on a normal way of SDI reworking. So I think you must complete different if you work with the IP solutions for the future. So you're all in favor of this? Yeah. You're all in favor of this new standard? You know, I'm not sure it matters yeah. because it's coming. Okay. Right. It's coming, <laughs> sure. It's coming. All right, I'm going to backtrack a little bit here. So, John, first, will you tell me a little bit about yourself, what your responsibilities uh, are? I'm vice president of uh, business development at Hitachi. Uh, we characterize business development as marketing. Um, I spend a lot of time out front of the salesman uh, making new technology presentations uh, and marketing. Uh, I, I do the website and uh, PR and advertising. I don't do it myself, but yeah, I'm in charge of it. Right. And uh, so we're always trying to be out front of the latest technology. So that's my interest in 2110. Fantastic. And Ray? Well, I, I, I founded uh, Plura uh, 2006, and since then we've been... Uh, forefront to provide solutions as far as monitoring solutions so uh, my role is to keep the company on, um, on the forefront with this industry uh, by making um, um, high quality products um, and also managing the day-to-day uh, -day operation for Plura. Very good and Thomas? Well, I have nothing to add there. Here I told everything. Well, uh, Thomas actually just joined us um, about a week ago. Oh my gosh! Well, yeah. welcome. Yeah. Hmm? Pardon? Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So he's uh, he's a new um, um, uh, front to uh, Plura Europe, which is our operation in um, in Europe, uh, based in Germany. Great. All right. Well, let's first ask you this: What are the benefits to IP twenty one ten? 
Well, before I think we should talk about the benefits, we should talk about what it is to make sure that everybody understands I love that even what better. we're talking about. What is it? So I have a slide that shows how we got to ST2110. It's All right, shall we run one, it? One, and hopefully it will be up here in a moment. All right, Steve, will you please run the first slide? Okay. There we go. Uh, we got to ST2110 through ST2022, which was simply encapsulating SDI and putting it on a network. Right. That was great, it was simple and easy to do, but it meant that you had to take the whole load of video and audio and data and everything else because that's the way SDI is. Along the way, it was determined that it would be far smarter to disassemble it into its different components. The next slide shows a close-up of ST2110. There it is. And how it actually works. Data, audio, and video are packetized, move across a network, depacketized, and you can take any part of that. You don't have to take the whole thing. And uh, the, the little SDP is session description protocol. It just simply says, here's what I'm sending. So that's where we are now with ST2110. I see, okay, and what's the significance of it? Well, I guess there's two parts to that. One part is that we're able to send just audio or just data right. without requiring the full load of video if right. you don't need it. Um, we can put 12 gigabit 4K on a 10 gigabit network if we only send the video, right. nothing else. Right. So that's one benefit. Which is, yeah, which is applicable, but I don't think a lot of customers or broadcasters are open to that idea, and that's where it's gonna bring us to 25 gig. Yes, but right. it's, it's, it's valuable, it's a valid point. I think also they wanna, you know, compre not a compress, but combine multiple streams, you have 10 gig, so you actually literally can have six 10 ADI streams into one cable. So that makes it more scalable. Um, you know, uh, we were talking before we got here, is there are some customers, they're looking at 5,000 by 5,000 routers, you know, ins and out. So this is impossible to do yeah, it's in It's not SDI. just difficult, yeah, it's, it's impossible. impossible. Yeah. Right. Wow. So that gives you the scalability. 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 Yeah. <clears throat> no, I think also for you, we need both of them. 22, 2022, and 2110. And the difference what you, for what you need it. If you have only a playout center, you don't need everything different. Right. So you take the easier way to take 2022. Yeah? If you have a production site where you need everything separated, right. so you must choose. So I think you need both standards for the complete area. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's right, Thomas, yes. you can say, right? Yeah, and then also um, PTP, it comes into this play where time code, the new time code, I would call it, or precision time protocol, that it also it has a completely new dimensions of what LTC used to be, which is a separate cable, a separate connectivity, now it's all embedded into yes. one cable. And it sounds simple, it's not. It's very complex situation because People say, well, what happens if you lose packets? What happens if you lose information? Well, now we're talking about Dash 7, which is the redundancy um, um, uh, protocol, which it will take some packets from stream one and others from stream two and bring the output of that into the actual stream itself. So uh, it, there's a lot of work. Uh, traditional data networks uh, send bursts of data. When we start to deliver video across a network, it is massive amounts of data and it cannot be stopped. Right. It can't be buffered, it can't miss packets, you right. cannot retransmit it. Right. It's real-time protocol sure. and it has to go through. This is something that computer networks are not used to. Right. And mm. as Ray said, one way to solve that problem is oversubscribe the network. Correct. If you want to send, say, 12 gigabits of data across the network, make sure it's a 25 gigabit network. Yeah. Hmm. That's one way right. to make sure it gets there yes. without losing anything. 
Wow. Um, the other thing, anyone who's ever looked at the back of a broadcast equipment rack knows that yeah. there's a myriad of cables. Yes, there are. All kinds <laughs> of audio, video, control, data. Different colors. <laughs> And they're usually different colors so that you can <laughs> so tell. They know what it is. Yes. Yeah. And uh, with ST2110, uh, we can put all of that bi-directionally in one cable right. in theory. Right. Wow. We're not there yet. No. But that's, that's the possibility. Uh, how, uh, uh, now, 2110 is quite new. Yes. Is it being implemented? Um, it, as a matter of fact, yeah, I think it has. Yeah. Uh, it, it, NEP, yeah. NEP. Uh, just built yeah. ESPN's EN3 mobile truck. Yeah. Uh, it's all 2110. 2110. But let me tell you, it's bleeding edge technology yeah. right now. Really? Yeah. It's, it's, it's in progress. It's, it's not there 100%. Sure. Um, interop is an issue, and that is something completely a different discussion. There's a lot of manufacturers um, who started with IP and they have different protocols before even 2110 was, you know, um, um, introduced by Simti. So, uh, and there was a lot of interop issues. I think now the interop is okay, uh, but it hasn't been really tested. Yeah. It hasn't been tested. The, the last slide, number five. Okay, if let's you run could, the last uh, slide. Ask them to bring that up. This is the, yeah, that's the suite of standards that we currently have today. There are more in process. Is it 50 that is the compressed version? Yeah, I think yeah. it's uh, dash 50. And uh, that is still in committee and hasn't been defined yet. Ah. That's how new this is. And there's, those are just some of the standards. It's a suite of standards, not right. just a single standard. Right, right, right. And just curious, are you on the uh, SIMTI Standards Committee for this, or is anyone from No, I just pay her? attention. You just pay yeah, attention. We, we, you know, um, <laughs> we, our operation in, in Europe are, um, because we, um, we develop timing solutions, so we are part of that, but uh, we do follow the standards and listen to what they have to say, yeah. and we have to implement it. Um, but it's even there's a standard out there. It doesn't mean it's set in stone. It right. Still has a standard be, is a standard. It's right. not the rule of law. Right. And it it you like what we did with you know 20, 2022 was out. Say oh this is going to fix all the problems. Guess what? It didn't. No. It's right. just a new set of problems. It, right. Yes. It's yeah. Different from the old <laughs> set of problems. Right. So twenty one ten, hopefully it will solve the problems. Um, I think we are still maybe two, three, four years to go to make it really full deployed uh, with comfortable, um, you know, convergence. But I should mention that hybrid, I believe, is the way to go. There are some applications you cannot, simply you cannot rely on 2110 100%. Live production, there's delay, there's latency. I remember with SDI, people were complaining, oh, the monitor is one frame delay, that's a big deal. Well, guess what? We have seven milliseconds delay now on IP. How are you gonna deal with that? So in live production, maybe we have to go back to SDI. So hybrid for me, I believe the way to go, but but who? what do I know? I am not the expert. No, I, I completely agree, Ray. Uh, you know, we're going to be in a hybrid world for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, there really is nothing wrong with SDI. Right. It's just that it is completely unique to the professional television industry. Nobody else uses it. Right. And so everything we do is unique and expensive. That's what that means. One of the advantages of using IP protocol to move video and audio is that we're using COTS, common off-the-shelf computer equipment. I love you you know, describing what that is, explaining that. <laughs> so, I try not to use acronyms without explaining what they I are. love that. Um, I thought you were doing it just for me, so that's great. <laughs> and, and so, that's one of the advantages. In time, the costs of the equipment will go down. Right. Um, right. Our equipment stays relatively more expensive because we don't spend as much as the computer industry. Um, but let me ask you, you say that you think it'll probably really be smoothed out in the next two to three years, but won't 22, 22 be out by then? Or it doesn't work that way? You well, know, Thomas, you, you mentioned that you liked <coughs> 2022 still. 
and uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, no, I think if you... No, I mean 2222. Um, I mean, won't there be another version after new. that? I, I don't think so. I okay. think 2110 has so many parts to it, and it's an emerging standard that will continue to add to the suite. Right. You, you guys may have a different I, view of that. I think that the most important thing with the IP standard is that you can change it. Yes. yes it's open for everything. Right. right. Yes. Scalable. And if you need only SEMTI 2022, because you need all, everything together, mm -hmm. like a playout center, you don't need every different and, and have many different data layers that you must handle. Right. All the data you have in different levels, you must orchestrate also. Right. Yes. So every time if you keep the, the, uh, keep the simplest way, how you handle your signals. Yeah? And, and building on that very point, uh, ST2110 and 2022 were built on existing computer standards. Yeah. Right. We didn't invent the wheel. No. We just used what the computer industry had already developed and applied it to our industry. So as things improve in the computer industry, it helps us too. And when you talk about the hybrid, that's, that's what you're talking about as far as managing a seamless convergence. Yes, because between IT and broadcast to have that hybrid. Correct. Broadcasters have always been using SDI. You know, we, we started with analog and we com converted to digital SDI, HDSDI, and there were a lot of issues in between, but we were, we came across very well and it wasn't that big, you know, transition, but now is IT people have a different approach to issues than broadcasters. Um, Broadcasters have a different knowledge from IT people, and you have to have common, you know, knowledge of both to be able to bring people together. And because IT people are going to manage these networks, mm -hmm. but also they have to understand, you cannot just say reboot the computer. We are live. Yeah. You know. Well, speaking of live and speaking of hybrid, the NAB show live is utilizing Plura. And yes. we can take a shot of the control room, Steve, and you can see the monitors up there. Uh, <laughs> Plura. Thank you. We, we, we're happy and, to support the industry. We're happy to support um, you know, everybody because that's what it means. Um, we all have to support each other to excel in what we do every day. Absolutely. So um, just wondering how you how Plura and Hitachi uh, work together, coordinate together. To we actually have a good synergy because we're not a competitor as per se. Um, Hitachi is a good manufacturer, and I'll let John to explain that, of, of a cameras. We are a monitoring company, and we do um, work together in providing them with the solutions and vice versa. Um, as a company ourselves, um, we always, as I mentioned earlier, we like to be at the forefront providing technology that it's needed today. So we have um, uh, IP monitoring uh, directly 2110 to the monitor, which helps broadcasters to implement what we were talking about and view the video or the pictures and the audio or the metadata in directly to the monitor. I'm just wondering how you assist the broadcasters with this, uh, just well, to continue Well, a camera's only question. as good as the display yeah. that you're viewing it on. Right. So we use Plura monitors. Um, uh -huh. Some of our viewfinders are actually Plura. And uh, as Ray said, we have a very good and long relationship with Plura uh, in our products. So although we obviously don't compete, we certainly need each other. Right, so I, I would think that you're both there with the same goal. Of, of educating and letting the, the broadcasters and industry know, well, this is how you can, this is how we work together. This is what will help you in the future in discussing these standards as well. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to mention something. I think uh, Ray mentioned it earlier, and that is interop or interoperability uh, among various manufacturers. Uh, NMOS, uh, TRO. Four and five, five, I think, are the ones right now where we're trying to get to plug and play. Right. That's 
a little ways away. No, but that was my next question. Yeah. What's your goal here? Yeah. So that's the goal. That's the goal. Plug, plug and, play. and play. Wouldn't plug that be just plug anything into anything? Oh and my gosh! That's what it is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and that is a not an easy task, but it will yeah. come because it worked before. Uh, now I know we're at the end of the show, but still. Uh, how has NAB been for you folks, and where are you? Do you both have booths at NAB, I, I take yes. it? So where, where are you? Even though there's an hour or two left, people can still come and see. <laughs> sure. well, we're just right over there, but in just Central inside Hall. the Central Hall, um, you know, a three-minute walk from here. What's the booth number? Uh, C4409. Very good, C4409. Is that right? Did I get it right? I don't, I'm, I'm going to say you are, but remember, I came out with, uh, you know, I said I said 2210, which is here. So what can I tell you? Don't listen. You to have me. to be good with numbers to be in this business. <laughs> I would think so. Yes, I would think so. Yeah. And Ray, where are you in? We are uh, at the North Hall, um, and our booth number is 2816. 2816. Yeah. Very good. Any any closing thoughts before we wrap up here? We're coming to the end. Oh, I think. If you use IP in the future for the broadcasters, they must thinking also new ways. Uh, I don't think you shouldn't make a design like you have done it before in the classical ways. Now you must think about tools that you are using and not so strict like before. This is this, this is this. And there must change in the system. There must be some changes in the system design for the future if you're using IP because it's a complete different world with much more options than before. This is the future for broadcasting yeah. and for them to sustain themselves in the industry, no? Uh, ab absolutely, and, and then also I would like to mention that the, the assumption when IP was deployed or suggested that it will be less or more cost effective. I don't think we have found that yet. We, we believe it's more expensive. now. They argue that, well, the operation aspect will be less. So your, you know, the personnel who's going to manage this will be less people. So it balances out. And we hope it will do, but we don't know. Fingers crossed. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's a very good point that I'd like to sort of reiterate. That is, in the beginning, I think uh, going to internet protocol, uh, what is called media over internet or video over internet uh, is going to be more expensive at first, uh, mostly because we'll be figuring it out. Yeah. And so will the computer people. Of course. And we won't have quite the efficiencies that are possible in the future. So it's important to be patient, be steady, be thorough. Yes. Yes. I cannot thank you enough for joining me today. Thank you so much. I hope you've had a successful NAB. And from NAB Live. You are watching NAB Show Live, brought to you by Broadcast Beat. This is Linda Rossner wishing you a good afternoon. This hour sponsored by Ruptly, the video news agency.